Hello friends. In this first lecture I want to talk about the Bible in general. Uh, let me just uh, say at the outset that these presentations should not substitute for your own reading of the book. Um, they intend to complement, to clarify, to focus on specific uh, concepts and ideas, but this in no way should, uh, should prevent you from reading the book uh, yourself. What is the Bible then? In the Bible we have, of course, uh, a series of stories. We have a large collection of laws. We have books that uh, consist of praises, of poems uh, that praise God. We have wisdom literature. We have the famous prophetic books. We have stories or history of ancient Israel. And then we have uh, stories uh, having to do with the life of Jesus and then the beginning of the church, letters written by the Apostle Paul to fledging Christian communities. Um, we have books that were written to the early Christians, and we have uh, at the end of the collection an apocalypse, the book of Revelation. It is clear then that when it comes to the Bible, we are really referring to not so much a book, although nowadays we see it in, in two covers, but in reality we're talking about a library, a library that consists of dozens of books, 66 in the Protestant Bible, 73 in the Catholic Bible. I am not going to stop and discuss very much in detail the development of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, because we'll be saying some more about this in later lectures. However, it should be clear that uh, it took, in many cases, hundreds of years for uh, this collection to develop. Uh, as a matter of fact, it took uh, most likely hundreds of years for some of the individual books to be written. What we see, however, in, is a certain overarching theme in the entire collection. And that is um, that the Bible is uh, a tool whereby humans can encounter God. Um, so it's, uh, it's a means of revelation for uh, one's pursuit of God, for one's encounter with God. And also there is a theme uh, closely connected to that, and that is the idea of covenants that is so prevailing both uh, in the so-called Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. Now, one should ask the question, why read the Bible? Why study something like this? I think that uh, it goes without saying that the Bible is one of the most important books in the world, has been for a very, very long time. Uh, it continues to be the world's most distributed book uh, every year, not only in the United States, but all over the world. Millions of copies are sold. It is uh, estimated that 90% uh, of American homes own at least one Bible. And uh, if your household is like mine, uh, we actually have uh, several Bibles here. Of course, the Bible is important for uh, those people that call themselves uh, believers, for Jews and Christians alike. Um, you probably are taking this class because you are a student at Anderson University. You may have been going to church uh, for a long time or, or just recently and are curious about the content of the Bible. So that is why the Bible is worth studying and, and knowing. Getting back to the topic that we introduced two slides before, I said that the Bible is not really a single volume, although today we see it under two covers, but it's in reality a library. Uh, the word in English, Bible, comes from the Greek word Biblia, uh, which refers to a, to a library, to a, a collection of books. 
And uh, here we have also uh, a difference between the Catholic Bible that has uh, more books than the Protestant one does, right? So the, the Catholic Bible has 73 books and the Protestant versions uh, generally have only se uh, 66. There is a there, there are other co uh, collections of Bibles um, or books, and here we can speak of the Greek Orthodox version, which is similar in content to the Catholic version and not so much to the Protestant. Let's talk about the issue of genre. Um, the Bible is really a collection of very, very different kinds of literature. So we have stories. We have poetry, we have songs, we have prophetic books, we have the Gospels, we have letters, uh, we have apocalyptic, such as uh, in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. So it is something that we'll uh, emphasize quite a bit this semester, is the study of genre, the, an approach to this literature from the standpoint of genre because that will be determinant in how these uh, texts are interpreted. Let's talk about the so-called Old Testament or Hebrew Bible. Um, you see there on, uh, on the screen that scholars prefer to call uh, this section Hebrew Bible as opposed to Old Testament, although they roughly correspond to the same thing. Um, the Old Testament consists of three parts, or uh, the Hebrew Bible, to be uh, precise, consists of three parts. The first part is the, the law, uh, in Hebrew, Torah. Then the Nevi'im, uh, the prophets. And then the writings, in Hebrew, Ketuvim. If you take the first letters of these uh, Hebrew words, Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, we are able to form an acronym, Tanakh. So very often uh, in academic circles, we refer to the Bible as the Tanakh, uh, which is then referring to this collection uh, in this order, uh, Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. Let's talk about the first uh, section, the Torah. Torah is a Hebrew word that simply means uh, teaching or instruction, although sometimes you see the word also translated as law. It is not incorrect to translate Torah as law, although uh, better translations really are teaching or instruction. The Torah consists of five, uh, the first five books of the Bible, so the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, these five books are also referred to or known as the Pentateuch, from the Greek for five scrolls, Penta, five uh, Teuchos scrolls. In turn, the books of Exodus through Deuteronomy are also known as the Mosaic Law because they, they deal primarily with laws um, and Moses is a primary character in those uh, four books, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, so Mosaic Law. Second part of the Tanakh is the Nevi'im, the prophets. Uh, the word means prophets in Hebrew. And this uh, group is in turn divided into two subsections, the former prophets and the latter prophets. Uh, the former prophets have four books, and the latter prophets have four books. Now, the former prophets uh, consist then in the collection Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. Now, as you will see there, um, Christians are used to seeing First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. However, in antiquity, those uh, books were copied in one scroll. Uh, and that is therefore why we can uh, count them as one book. So, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, one book, and First and Second Kings, one book again. So, uh, uh, together we have 
four books there. The Former Prophets is a narrative that covers events that uh, happened between 1200 BC to roughly the beginning of the 6th century BCE. BCE is uh, an abbreviation that means before the common era. Uh, it roughly corresponds to uh, a nomenclature uh, that we used uh, until uh, no, not too long ago before Christ. The second group in the Nevi'im is the latter prophets, um, which actually contains the prophetic books, right? So the big, uh, the three big ones, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and then the smaller bo uh, books of prophecy, uh, such as uh, Hosea, Joel, Amos, and so forth, the, the so-called minor prophets. So there we have 15 books. And these books uh, contain the oracles, uh, revelations, uh, very often in verbal speeches uh, given by God by way of prophets. Of the Hebrew Bible is the Ketuvim. That is a word in Hebrew that means writings. Out of the three sections, this is the one that contains the most diverse material. It includes poetry, short stories, historical narratives, books of wisdom such as Job and Ecclesiastes, uh, visionary speculations such as Book of Daniel. It closes with the books of First and Second Chronicles when the Persian king Cyrus uh, encourage the Judean exiles to return to uh, Judah and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Let's talk about the Septuagint. Um, it is also known as the work of the 70, and that is why you can see the Roman numeral 70 uh, at the top of the slide. Um, this is a translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek that was done uh, maybe two centuries before the time of Jesus. Um, it is a translation, once again, uh, of the text of the Hebrew Bible from the original languages of Hebrew and Aramaic into common Greek or Koine. It is likely that the Septuagint was the Bible of the early Christians, and that is why we can say that uh, it was seen as the primary Bible of the uh, writers of the New Testament. Now, this, the Septuagint is important because in addition to being a translation into an ancient language, it also introduced uh, some important changes um, uh, sometimes to the contents of the books, but also to the order of the books uh, of the Old Testament, thus producing a, a different understanding of the collection, an understanding that to a certain extent marked, uh, introduced uh, differences uh, in how people came to understand the collection uh, between the Jews and then the Christians. Um, we may talk about that uh, some more uh, at a later point. It's not necessary to dwell on that right now. The New Testament is that second half of the Bible. It is um, focused, of course, on the life, death of Jesus, and then on the beginning of the church. Um, here we have then uh, Jesus, um, Jesus' life is told in these uh, stories that uh, are uh, called the Gospels. And then we have, after the Gospels, we have the Book of Acts, which is a narrative of how Jesus' followers spread throughout the Roman Empire at the time. 